Someone call for repairs. Oh yeah, that's me. What seems to be the problem? Uh, it's over here. Yeah, that's gonna take a lot of work. In my last video, I talked about all the reasons why Cho Chang is both better and worse than you remember. Better in that she's not the embodiment of the typical Asian stereotype, but worse in the sense that her character is severely underdeveloped for the amount of page time and impact that she's given. For a coming of age story, to underwrite the main protagonist's first love interest is always a crime. But in this case, it's made worse because she's written to have a decent role in book 5, but fails to leave the story in any meaningful way. But is it possible Rowling could have written her better without adding another 100 plus pages to her already textbook long books? The answer is yes, and I'm going to show you how, while preserving most of what the author would have wanted to keep in the final version. Just to recap, there are three main problems people had with her. Number one, her name is a mishmash of two last names. To some, Rowling might as well have called her Ching Chong. Ching Chong Ling Long Ting Tong? Number two, she was sorted into Ravenclaw and thought to have exemplified a lot of the Asian stereotypes. All these Asian stereotypes, like Asian people are good at math. I didn't know that. Number three, she was nothing but a love interest to two white saviors and thus had no character or agency of her own. I half agreed with the first criticism and debunked the second. But while we're on the topic of fixing the character, I don't think changing Cho's house from Ravenclaw to Hufflepuff or even Gryffindor would have fixed any of the problems people had with her. The problem with Cho is really surmised in criticism number three, her poorly developed character. Moving her to another house would have not stopped her from adding to Harry's rivalry with Cedric, nor would it have changed much of her relationship to Harry in book five. It only serves to get the critics off her back for stereotyping her, but again, Cho is not just Ravenclaw. She is very popular, stands up for herself, and is an excellent Quidditch player. So for all intents and purposes, we are going to keep Cho Chang and Ravenclaw and abide by that part of Rowling's vision. Now Cho's character heavily revolves around her relationship with Harry and Cedric. To cut that out would essentially be cutting out 90% of what we know Cho Chang to be. So we're going to keep that as part of her core character. But just because a character is primarily known to be a love interest doesn't mean they have to be a cardboard cutout. With all the buildup from books 3 through 5, there could only be a few ways Harry and Cho's relationship could end up being satisfying. Number 1. They end up together and we get two more books of them being an inter-house power couple. The first option would require a huge rewrite to the entire story, so unfortunately we can't entertain that option without going too far into headcanon. While I personally like the idea of couples from different houses, that's not enough for me to push for this ending. Plus, I'm sure the Ginny fangirls would skewer me alive for even suggesting such blasphemy. So Cho and Harry break up, but the key here is to figure out how it can be rewritten to make it more satisfying to the reader who has been rooting for them ever since Harry had his sights on her in Prisoner of Azkaban. Let's set the context for Cho's point of view first. It can be inferred that Cho has a really strong connection to Cedric with what's implied in Book 4, Goblet of Fire, when they are seen holding hands all the time after the Yule Ball, and she becomes Cedric's thing he would sorely miss in the second task. Then in book 5, Cho becomes overwhelmed with grief over Cedric's death. She has been seen crying just about everywhere on the Hogwarts grounds, and this is further evidenced when she tries to ask Harry about Cedric during their date at Madame Puttyfoot's. We can safely say that Cho is dealing with the heavy loss of her boyfriend, who, at the time, might have been someone she hoped to spend the rest of her life with. Her choice to start dating Harry becomes a bit murky because of that too. Was she interested in him for him, or as a point of contact since he was the only one with Cedric when he died? While we see everything from Harry's perspective, it would be stupid to think that he is the only one dealing with the pains of Voldemort's return. Even though other people are affected to different degrees, it doesn't mean everyone else is living their best life. Neville is one example, Cho is another. Her boyfriend was killed very suddenly and there was so much misinformation going about it that it's hard to know what to believe. She kept faith in Harry's word, but that doesn't mean that hearing all the lies spread about her late boyfriend's death makes it any easier to hear. In contrast, Harry was dealing with Voldemort's return and having to deal with everyone calling him a liar. It wasn't a good time for Harry and Cho to date each other with each of them carrying so many unresolved feelings on their own. Add the fact that Cho's friend Marietta sold out the DA to Umbridge, their relationship ended with a yelling match and they never so much as talked again after that. A three book buildup that ends with an argument and a passing smile. Fuck right off. Cho Chang was never written to be a callous character. She didn't embarrass Harry when he asked to speak to her alone in book four. She was genuinely sorry when she had to turn him down for the Yule Ball. She defended him with no hesitation at all in the Owlery when Filch was trying to pin something on him. And she returned to Hogwarts to fight and risk her life in the final battle when she already graduated and had no real personal stake in it. 
So to have her devolve into an emotional wreck without any real closure on their relationship was going to make her look awful in the eyes of readers everywhere. With so much buildup, Rowling could have tried to make her an ally in book six and seven, with her still believing in the mission of the DA and trying to awkwardly be friends with Harry, but many have suggested that this would be unrealistic. Cho was never actually friends with Harry before they dated, so there would be no real incentive for them to be friends afterwards either. I can actually agree with that, but the only problem is that we get three books of buildup for her as a love interest. If she wasn't going to contribute as her own character beyond that, she should have never been given so much buildup in the first place. Option three is my personal pick for how I would rewrite Cho. Have them break up, but give her and Harry real closure at the end of book five. Cho's character hinges around her relationship with Cedric and how his death affected her. Harry was never able to give her that sense of closure because he wasn't ready to talk about Cedric at Madame Puttyfoot's. The argument that they had over Cho's friend was what made it loud and clear to both her and Harry that a relationship between them would never work. For Cho, she knew that he would never feel comfortable sharing everything he knew with her. He would always go to someone like Hermione first. And for Harry, he didn't like how she went to bat for her friend after it was clear her friend forced Dumbledore to leave the school. If Rowling wanted to portray a messy teenage romance that doesn't quite work because of lack of chemistry and bad timing, I get that. But why not give us a short scene at the end of the year where Cho and Harry see each other in passing and sit down to have a final talk about everything. Cho's main reason for being is coming to grips with Cedric's death and Harry needs to give that to her. He needs to tell her everything he told Ron and Hermione about what happened in the maze because he's the only one who can. He should realize this, not because he owes her this as her ex-boyfriend or anything, but because he's a decent human being and he can see how much it's hurting her. In turn, Cho can admit to Harry that her friend was wrong for turning in the DA to Umbridge. Harry giving Cho what she needs in closure with Cedric, and Cho giving Harry what he needs in knowing that she messed up by bringing Marietta into the DA, they could part ways on a satisfying note. That's not realistic. People don't always get closure. Me, 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 me. It's not realistic to get closure, really. One time I put on gloves and jumped in the dumpster to get closure. Also, realism is fine, whatever. But this is also a story. I demand satisfaction. And we did not get satisfaction. Rowling wouldn't have needed to spend more than two pages on this and it would have given us everything we needed to close the book on Cho Chang forever. Because, while diehard fans have been scrutinizing over Cho's character, a lot of her nuance with the distress of losing Cedric is too subtle for the average reader to pick up. Harry and Cho's final talk would have definitely made that crystal clear. By doing that, Cho wouldn't be one of the most hated characters in the Harry Potter universe, and Asians everywhere wouldn't have to groan every time they hear her name. While I'm not saying you can't have any unsavory POC characters in your story, this half-assery in character development really does harm the community it supposedly represents. We can get a dislike Zachariah Smith because we get a likable Cedric Diggory. We can get an annoying Colin Creevy because we also get a cool Oliver Wood. But we get nothing when we get a wishy-washy Cho Chang because, oh right, she's the only one. In conclusion, Rowling could have fixed Cho's character with a minor one to two page edit to give her character closure at the end of book five. This would have required little change to the rest of her books, added more depth to the character, and given the Asian community a little less to be disdainful about. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any thoughts about the subject, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you're new here, please make sure to hit that like button, smash subscribe, ring the bell, and check out the shop in the description down below. I have a lot of new exciting video essay topics planned for the future, so be on the lookout for that.